Hello everyone, in Adventures Airtime here, and today I'm with the Virtual Towers Online crew. Hi. Uh, Hello. And they're responsible for creating the Alton Towers Park in 3D. Um, I'll be honest, I'm quite new to your page. I recently found it online, just it stumbled across, I stumbled across it when I was on Facebook, um, and it was a video of the Smiler POV, which I was really impressed by. And I went on your page and it turned out all my friends liked your page already. It was like ten of you, ten of my friends already liked your page. I was like, oh. I was like messaging them and I was like, have you heard about this? And I'm like, yeah, we've heard about it ages ago. <laughs> I was like, Bit late. great, thanks for telling me. I, like, I love stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's good to meet you. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about your projects. Uh, so what do you all do in the project? What's your So do? I'm Peter. I'm basically the boss, CEO, creator of the entire project. Um, I started everything uh, okay. quite a few years ago, so, so my my project if anything. Yeah, cool. I'm Jordan, um, I, I joined the team last uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I literally take control of most of the programming, so uh, Unreal uses something called blueprinting okay. um, and do a bit of modelling on the side. Yeah, cool. Um, I'm Ben and um, I'm an architecture uh, modeler so I was responsible for um, the theming in Hex, um, FCC and Oblivion Exit Bridge. Uh, I'm also responsible for the trains, so the smarter trains and um, cool. all the various parts of theming around the park. Awesome. Okay, I'm Dave. Um, Overall, I've dabbled in just about everything in the project. A tiny little bit of everything, but my main focus is foliage. So all the trees that you see around the park, um, and very specific like organic modelling. So you know th things that um, that's, that's not geometric. You know stuff not, not like buildings. Yeah. Um, so like for example in Hex, the uh, the branch, uh, okay. the face that sits underneath the gondola, yeah. anything organic that's sort of out of the ordinary. Um, and I also take care of all the video and, and media side of the project as well. So you've got a lot of foliage to deal with. <laughs> I have a lot, because the, the issue with Alton Towers is no two trees are alike, generally. There's yeah. a lot of very large, unique trees, okay. and they all have to be modelled from scratch based on photos we've taken on the park. Okay. So Exceptor um, alone has got quite a few unique trees, surrounded by you know loads of pines and stuff, but like the Wellingtonia that's next to uh, uh, next to Oblivion, that's the height of Oblivion. You know that was a nightmare, wasn't yeah. it? We we we, were, we all um, we all stay in contact while we're doing all this work. So we will Skype call and you know reference each other. And you know they saw the amount of work that went into just that <laughs> one tree. So it's uh, yeah, okay, it can cool. take a while. So you're all spread out across the country. How did you all get involved in this project together? With it being me starting the project, um, it originally started in RCT. I was, it was basically an RCT3 mod um, and in that really? era I basically spoke to Ben just on forums uh, and we became friends on that way um, and then it sort of developed a bit bigger, went into No Limits, uh, Dave was doing air, so just air, that's all he was doing um, and I, there's a, there's a bit of a chequered history on that one <laughs> which I think... Uh, oh, we, were, we were in competition for a while because oh. <laughs> it was like it basically he th he um, accused me of stealing assets. And it was like, <laughs> no, and uh, and we had a friend who basically introduced us and sort of said, "Look, sort it out." And then yeah, we sorted that out because it was not true, and we just sort of carried on from there. Um, and then Jordan sort of well, he just turned up. <laughs> yeah. You've gone through three different. It's like. How are you building and doing a project? You're doing it on three different kind of things. So you've RCT three first. Yeah, which was originally just going to be project. Ne it was project Nem twenty. It was basically for Nemesis's twentieth anniversary. Oh right. Okay. Um, so it was just Forbidden Valley, and that was all it was. Which is why sort of Dave was brought in with the air, sort of like, oh, you're doing air. Can I have it? <laughs> <laughs> Once we sort of went into the no limit side of it, um, and then it was like, RCT is good, but it has a lot of limitations. Yeah, I was going to say, I feel sorry for you having to make something <laughs> RCT but, it, but I use No Limits to create custom tracks. Oh. So I had cust completely custom tracks and then custom land, uh, custom terrain that would match it properly. The only thing that was limited was um, 
to make it work with peeps, it had to have their queue line system, which is obviously the 4x4 four four grid with no uh, diagonals yeah. or anything. So that was like, it messed everything up. Um, but then we sort of moved it to no limits because it was just a much better program because of what we wanted to do until that had a limit. Irony. And it was <laughs> like, well, what can we do? Well, why don't we just make it from scratch, which is when we went into the Unreal side okay. of things. So what made you choose Alton Towers as the theme park to model rather than, I don't know, Blackpool Pleasure Beach or, <laughs> or Hangover? <laughs> or... The, the thing with, the, with Alton Towers is I think when, when somebody thinks theme park in the UK, it's sort of the, one of the first ones you, you think of yeah. and it really is sort of, it is what you, you think a theme park is. You've got Blackpool which is a great park but it's it's not a proper theme park, it yeah. is like an amusement park, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And you've got so much variation in towers, you, you've got obviously the built up bits, you've got the ruins of, of, of the towers, you, you've got lots of uh, greenery, it's, it's just got a bit of everything and um, obviously some of the best rides in the UK as well. So, And it was a park we'd all been to, we knew it quite well, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. And it was, I would say, relatively in the middle of where we for everyone had to get to. Yeah. So, mm. It really made sense in that way, didn't it? Mm. I'd say quite a few of us, well, probably all of us, have also got childhood memories of being there yeah. as well. Yeah, 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 I mean, I've been going for 25 years. Right, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I only started going in the year 2000. So that's, that's crazy. Yeah. You've been way before um, yeah, seven years before that. <laughs> so, is On Towers your, your favourite theme park? In the, in the, in, I'll say in the world, shall I? From what I've been to, it has most of everything, rather okay. than more of the niggly bits that don't sort of quite work. It may not have the best rides in the world. I mean, that's not possible because. Yeah. It, but they're world class rides, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Is it yours as well? Or is Certainly it? the best UK theme park. I'm a bit on the fence when it comes to world one, having been to. Fantasia Land with its theming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the level of theming there is obviously a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> uh, I think personally, it means a lot to me. Um, grew up there, um, spent a lot of time um, just just there. Found it like a place to to relax almost. So yeah. to me, it was yeah, it's yeah number one in my eyes. It just works for all of us, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, because. There's a lot of, especially with Facebook and forums and stuff now, there's loads of arguments and debates yeah. and things about there what's the best theme park. Be. And, right, will be. <laughs> <laughs> and right now it's like, uh, there seems to be a big thing about Icon versus Wickerman. Which is stupid because they're two completely different rides. It's not a fair comparison. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've not met any of you before, but I've, that's, interesting. that's a good opinion because I know lots of people at the moment who, like, if, as soon as you talk about it, they're like, flip out and it's like one of them, all, <laughs> one or the other, but yeah, they are completely different yeah. things because. Like you said, Alton Towers is a proper theme park, uh, Blackpool's like, it can't be a theme park because no. it's so compact. Yeah. So far, what has been created and how long has it taken? If you take it all the way back for Project NEM20, so obviously Nemesis's 20th anniversary would have been 2014. I started in 2011, but sort of dabbled in 2008. Mm -hmm. So. If you say that the main bulk of it started in 2011 or 10, it's still being, it's ongoing for eight, over eight years. Wow. What's been created has been a lot and then restarted many times. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, like, Forbidden Valley was built up and then just completely scrapped. Okay. And we haven't even gone back to that. Right. And now we're sort of over to X Sector. That's sort of um, our phase one kind of area is um, a redo of Hex, which was our first ever released demo. But it was like we hadn't really got a lot of um, experience in Unreal. So it was laggy, it was badly optimized, right. it wasn't that great looking. But we learned from it and then we sort of expanded into X Sector learning everything so much more and then redoing Hex and then it's like well it gets boring doing one area so it's like well let's just do the whole lot let's get the whole <laughs> lot as a base plan and then if we feel like we'll work over there today we'll work over there tomorrow we'll leave it for a week and then we'll come back somewhere completely different 
as Pete was saying, in terms of sort of what's what's been done and you know what is remaining to be done, um, we do have images showing obviously what we have done mm. in other areas of the park. So it's like so you can kind of say we got that done, we we didn't, we did, we didn't. Um, but I would say since we got into Unreal, the progress has been a lot more steady, hasn't mm. it? Out of a much higher standard. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we want to maintain. Yeah. It is going to take a while, but I think we're trying to aim for what we're calling, still calling phase one, mm. aren't we? Which is X sector, right. uh, hex, and sort of the the front of the towers, sort yeah. of area, right, and spin yeah. as well. Is, is that included? Well, it's not yeah. meant to be, but I really want to get it right. in because it's, it's going to be something that we should be able to get done pretty quick. Yeah. So, despite everything, I'd say we're getting, uh, we're doing more each each time. It's it's you know it's it's the, it's the ball rolling. It's, yeah. it's getting getting more every time. So, uh, it seems like. Because I'm not, I don't, I've not done this sort of thing before. But I'm into gaming, and I've heard about the Unreal Engine before. Mm. Seems like that's a much better choice than, oh yeah, what you had before. Yeah, especially RCT. Yeah, is like at the time, like when you go back, you, that seems like a good thing to do. And then imagine when you build it up to a certain point, you like get the lim hit the limitations, and then because like I've just played that game just as it came mm. and hit limits with like the performance on it because yeah. of having like a big par. Um, and there's no limits. I've played that. I've, well, it's not supposed to be a game, is it? Really? But I've played that before, <laughs> and um, that has limits because it's not. It seems, from my experience, it seems harder to um, have multiple things yeah. near each. Like, like a theme, like a park. It seems to be more about one thing yes. to me. But it's, I've not worked much in it. I think it's still. Um, you definitely can't do a park, but. It has its use for us. Oh yeah, it? we, we, all the we literally use it yeah. now as a design program. So we build all our coasters in Unreal, right? Okay. Uh, in, in no, no li limits. Yeah. Um, then convert those into a three D model using Cinema Four D. Okay. The <laughs> most complicated process in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like yeah, we take it from there, put it there, put it in Unreal. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you over the course? Of <laughs> oh. Yeah, to try and work out animations as well, because we actually use the physics from No Limits to generate the animation into Unreal, but it's it's not easy. Right. Yeah, I can imagine, yeah, I didn't realise, because I was wondering in my head, because I've modelled things in 3D before, but very basic things, I was wondering, how do you even start modelling a track that's like a yeah. anything that's not a straight bit of track? So, for example, <laughs> with the tracks, it is actually modelled as a straight line. We actually model it as a straight line And first. then does it get put around a, some kind it, of path? We have a plug-in in Cinema 4D that uh -huh. takes the spline information from No Limits and allows you to follow it all the way around. Uh -huh. um, which also gives us very finite control over uh, tie density, placements of track connectors, placements yeah. of support connectors. Because we've got, because the spline is linear, just twisted up, we can uh, pinpoint exact measurements. Yeah. Which we do. So we can sort of look on the track in photos and then look on the model in No Limits and be like, well, that needs to be 20 metres that way. So it's like, put it on the straight line and then once it gets folded round... I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like, yeah, I love the attention to detail of that. That's really good. Yeah, have you ever, well, it's like that kind of thing. Have you ever done something and spent a lot of time and then you just go, oh, I didn't save that properly or, or oh, that corrupted? Yeah. Or... Uh, yeah, um, the bridge that goes over <laughs> by the, the, the big fancy bridge over the back end near uh, Battle Galleons. Yeah. I modelled it. Oh, the old bridge. Yeah, the old uh, bridge. Yeah. And I modelled it. It was great. Saved. Fine. Went back to it. Why is it not there? Has it not saved? <laughs> I'll remodel it. <laughs> Fine, I'll remodel it or whatever. <laughs> and then it was like, why is my performance so bad? That's a bit weird. And then, because I'd, I'd I was working somewhere else in the park, and I was like, my performance is really bad suddenly, because I'd unhidden, uh, like, hidden geometry to work on curves. Yeah. Have a look around, and it was like, that area is a bit laggy. Mm. Why is there two bridges? <laughs> <laughs> it was a hidden entire bridge. and CD I really twice. Yeah. Which one was no. better? The second one. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprising. So at least the second time it was better. Because it was like, yeah. oh, I can do better. I would have thought, yeah, I would have thought you would have been frustrated and been like... No, because we, we remodel so many things over and over again. Oh. Yeah. Like, I've modelled very small things that are like this big. And I'm mm. like, I spend a lot of time on that and like... <laughs> That 
fridge. I know what. I know what that fridge looks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's that's one of the probably the most annoying things that I've done. I think everybody who does anything to do with um, design or yeah. probably three, I don't like three D things or anything like that where you've got a big file. Oh yeah, oh. the, the video, re video rendering is, and things like that. Yeah, it's like, yeah, the the Unreal. I mean, like we share a central server of all our files. At the moment, it's at about 130 gig, and that's just documentation and and uh, wow. SketchUp files basically. Mm. Then there's the actual project file, which is I think topping out about 30 to 40 gig at the moment, and there's like nothing there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Expect a terabyte be... release. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what was that game with like 250 gig game? It was that Star something. Yeah, it's it going to be big then. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a big game. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the end, pro the end product that you want? Because I saw people commenting before asking what it's going to be. Because so far I've just seen videos of what you've made, which is really good to see. But with it being in Unreal, it makes me think is it, is it going to be something you can walk around? Yes. Is it going to be... Yeah, okay. It, what we want it... We've got sort of a goal A, a goal B, and maybe a goal C, depending on how A and B go. Yeah. The absolute like best situation is it's going to be a full-fledged game. You are a member of staff working your way up the ranks as from a litter picker. You operate every single ride, but you have to learn on the lower rides to get to the bigger rides, and then you can mm. become an area manager operating all the rides, um, but then you don't have to be that role. You can just walk around the park, ride everything as a guest, yeah. and you get to experience towers anywhere in the world at any given time, hopefully making people want to go to the park. Yeah. Which then leads to why it might not, because obviously it being towers, intellectual property, copyright, yeah. we still aren't working with Merlin. We've got bits and pieces from them, they haven't shut us down, but they're not exactly helping. Yeah, I was going to ask about that, because I know with Merlin being such a big company, they, I know what they're like dealing with certain things and mm. how they can be funny about them. Yeah. I can, I can imagine an independent park would be a lot easier to deal with potentially, but Merlin, because they're so big and have so many people involved, um, it's difficult. Yeah. stakeholders <laughs> and everything. Um, yeah, so have they said anything about... They know about us. Um, they haven't... I mean, they've helped little bits and pieces here and there with different managers on park and, and a lot of staff are alright with it. Um, but then every now and again we'll come up with a brick wall and it's like, why are you being like that? Mm. It's like there's no need for it kind of thing. But we don't do anything that we're not meant to do. Because yeah. that would be stupid because yeah. we want to work with them. Yeah. But if we can't get it as a game, then what we want is to basically work with Merlin and use it as a tool. So Merlin can have it. Right. Yeah. And what better way to visualise a new ride if you've already got a park to, to full scale be like, okay, we want a new ride, we'll dump it there, what does it look like? Yeah, because when when you see parks doing visuals of like a uh, new ride, like you'll see, I, I'm, so, I'm sure you've seen icons. <laughs> <laughs> like, to the average, I knew you'd offer that, because like the, the general public probably don't care, but I know someone who, people like you who do things in 3D, when you see that POV, yeah, I'm going to say, <laughs> say two words, big one. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not just big one, but it's that's the thing. Big, that they yeah, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> the interesting thing about the POV uh, and the video they did for Icon was even a particular someone of note <laughs> who's related to Alton Towers. Um, I don't know if I should be able to mention his name, but even yeah. he said it was uh, quite a poor animation. Yeah. And the thing is, I did an amazing big one recreation, didn't I? Yeah. And it's yeah. sort of known as the best big one recreation there is. Mm -hmm. And I asked nobody, I, I, in fact I know this guy called Lenny, through No Limits Exchange, who works for Mac. He asked me if we could use his, uh, use my skyboxes for some of the projects. He could have asked me for the big one, I would have been well happy yeah. for that to be in the animation. <laughs> but no, it's pretty, pretty poor, wasn't it? Yeah. That's but then that's point. where we are, our goal C comes into it. If we can't get the game and we can't work for Merlin, we use it as a product to say, hey, do you want us to do your park as good as this? Mm. So, for example, with Oblivion in your park, 
how did each person like come together to create that? So like, what did you so do? So I sort of bring everything together that gets modelled. So it's like um, I I literally take everything that has been done and put it together. Okay. Um, but I couldn't have done certain things without other people's sort of inputs, kind of yeah. thing. So so with Dave, he made the track. He made the track in No Limits of Oblivion. Okay. Yeah, so making the track is, it might seem like a really straightforward thing to do because it is a very simple layout, but when you're going for the levels of accuracy we're trying to get, it can be it can be pretty tricky. And what we figured out was the, <laughs> the on-ride photo sleeve of Oblivion actually shows the profile of the ride. It shows the lift hill, the turn and the drop. Right. And using other plans, you're able to work out the radius of the turn uh, at the top of the lift hill and you can splice all this information together and get a pretty accurate uh, 3D model of it. So I was able to make a 3D model of that and then uh, put that into No Limits and trace the track around the 3D model and there you go, you've got more or less the perfect thing. The issue we're dealing with at the moment is No Limits uh, NL2's spline export, which is how we get the positional information about the track and all that lot, yeah. it has a certain flaw where a straight piece of track, if you, I don't know how how much people will know about how No Limits works, but if you want a straight piece of track, you make two strip nodes so that there'll be no movement in between them. Yeah. And when the train traverses from a strip node to a normal piece of track, in No Limits it's smooth, it's, it's flat, but the output of the spline creates small bumps and um, we do not know how to get around it at the moment. We will get somewhere, yeah. hopefully. That's the only limitation I had. Um, everything else was fine. And then I sent that to the, the information of that spline data to Pete, and then Pete was able to start working on the track. Okay. So once I'd got Dave's track, I made the, like I was saying, the straight piece of track. It's like the entire length of, of Oblivion in one piece. Um, and then it's like a case of, right, this section becomes lift hill put the lift hill detail in, this bit becomes that detail, that bit, that bit, that bit. Um, and then put that through Cinema 4D, that creates the full 3D sort of curved layout using the spline data, and then that ends up going into uh, Unreal. Okay, and so do you have to like get a texture for the... Oh, like, yeah, so the... the bot, like the colour of Oblivion track? Yeah, so the, the, the bulk of it is all right. The rails have to be custom textured, so um, you use UV mapping to take three uh, you take the three points of contact, you've got the top, the side and the bottom, yeah. and a blank section, um, make that as a flat, and then wrap it around the rail, mm -hmm. and then as it gets projected along, it allows it to follow it correctly. Okay. So, you two. <laughs> so, um, I'll start. Um, so, in actual fact, my work on Oblivion actually started as part of joining the team, really. Yeah. Um, my task for joining the team was actually to model the interior of Oblivion Station. Well, okay. um, so I'm responsible for the bays, the air gates, the cabin, control panel, <laughs> basically anything you see inside the station, okay. uh, even the external cages oh, um, yeah, yeah. that go into the, literally anything in that building, apart from the shell which was already mm -hmm. modelled. Um, okay. Literally, that's everything I've well, done. But then again, I take his, for example, air gates, and then I animate them. So I put okay. them through Blender uh, and make them actually animated. Give them the sort of how how long it takes to open and close, given the different positions, and then that again goes into Unreal and sets it up in the blueprints, which is back to him again. Yes, <laughs> yes which is um, so yeah, programming the features that go along with. Um, Oblivion. Now I can't take credit for all of the programming for Oblivion. Yeah. Um, but we need to redo it anyway. Yes. So. Uh, but there's been a few things I've just recently implemented, which one day will show off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I haven't really done um, a lot for Oblivion apart from the exit bridge from but the station. You, but you will be redoing the trains. Yeah. The the trains are well, obviously they they make they make the ride, don't they? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'll be in charge of them and making sure the dimensions are right for people to sit in and you know the harnesses are the right widths and lengths and yeah. so yeah that's that's a big task in itself but that's um, yeah that'd be yeah. great when it's done. Yeah one of the big questions I was going to ask was how do you get the sizing and the scale and the geometry and 
everything like mapped out in the right place because I've tried, I, I think a lot of people have probably tried to like recreate a theme park in RCT, <laughs> RCT2, <laughs> which is impossible, like yeah. impossible to do anywhere near how it's supposed to be. I remember there was a map, I'm pretty sure they, or well, a scenario of, did they do Lightwater Valley, I think? And they uh, did, Katie's Dreamland. Which was, was yeah. it was like really sad. But then RCT2 did have Alton Towers and the Pleasure Beach in it yeah. as well. And like, it was interesting how they like made it work with how limited it is. So how do you get, because I can see that it looks like it should, but how do you get like <laughs> land levels the right place? Um, but the distance apart and like the height of a like the height of oblivion compared to the smiler and things like that how do you get that a lot of plans so um, you can get plans yeah so basically staffordshire moorlands is the governing body over um towers planning so everything has to go through them and it's because it's a public board anyone can access the files so we go on there find the files and they're generally because they're digital copies and they're done to a scale they'll say at the bottom corner, so AO paper at 250 times. So it's 250 times smaller at an AO piece of paper. Okay. Put that into SketchUp as an actual AO piece of paper, scale it up 250 times, it's now life size. Okay. Um, because the plans are such in high detail that you'll have um, height markers taken by um, laser trig, basically. Oh, right, yeah. Every point we draw a line vertically to that height and then join everything back together again oh, right. so that gives us our flat flat land it gives us our land base um and then every now and again there'll be certain plans that include buildings so that gives us oh, there you go there's a building um coaster plans that'll have something on that that we can use wow if there's not anything then it's very difficult yeah, yeah, because so you can get like different heights of different parts of the land, mm. and then you can you'll have to try and make it up in between for now until you yeah. get it perfect based on pictures and look going there in person. I'm guessing. Yeah, and that actually leads me on to another question: How often do you go to Alton Towers, or how in the last since two thousand and eight, or how many times have you been to Alton Towers for this project? Shall oh, I say? Oh. Quite a lot, because we we can like stay in a lodge for a week, go on park every day just to take data and photos. So you've, you've spent like a week in Autumn Towers for just your project, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you all go and do that? Whatever, whatever we can, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Or every now and again, one of us or two of us might go and get something very specific okay. or, or something and then it'll be like, well, the other two didn't because they couldn't get there yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, obviously with them three being a bit closer than me, They'll right. probably get there more than I will. Yeah, yeah, because it's a fifteen mile drive for yeah. me. <laughs> it's <four hours. laughs> Annual pass holder. It's just like yeah. walk up, <laughs> camera a lot. Well, that's <laughs> trick. If you, if you want to like just, I'll oh, just quickly go measure. It. He can just like go there and like yeah, yeah. tape measure it. <laughs> 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 but that works. I can say right, go get me something. Yeah, I need this. Go get me it. Yeah, that's um, handy. I mean, especially last year, it was like unpark. What do you need? Yeah. And then, yes. and then whatever we happen to be working on, it's like, I need it from this particular angle at this time. And it's like, right, I'll get that. And so as, the, as obviously the park develops, potentially faster than you can map the park <laughs> out, because yeah. of the amount of detail you're going into, will, when, you, when, you've got the full release, when you've got it complete to a certain extent, what will you do when new things get added or things get changed or... Have you not got a plan for that? There's a couple of ways we're going to do it. It's never going to be complete. Okay. We're always going to keep up with the park. Right. Um, the things that we've got modelled that will be removed, kind of thing. So, for example, the flume. Uh, flume <laughs> and, oh, so you've modelled uh, the flume. Yeah. <laughs> and, to a point. Um, <laughs> all the landscape was, anyway. Uh, and also, like, the ticket booths in the entrance. Oh, yeah, I was going to say the ticket booths. They've, they've just been deleted. <laughs> Cause it's like, things well, like that must be frustrating like if you've spent a lot of time yeah. doing it and then you have to see on Facebook it's been removed <laughs> but what we're going to do um, everything will be always kept up to date but there's going to be a way of everybody riding old things Yeah. That's... so there is going to be history yeah because I look through them now obviously it's gone completely that would be cool to yeah, see it back, if yeah. you've done it in such accuracy that's a good way to that's a good like a uh, 
it's like a downside to having to keep up with it, but it's also upside because mm. to go back to things. Yeah, like the there, there will be a way for people to ride old things. It's the one thing that we're sort of trying to keep as people know we're going to allow it, but nobody knows how we're doing it yet. So, oh, so I've got a fan in mind yeah. for that. Okay. Yeah. So this is for Ewan. Um, <laughs> Ewan's asked me to ask because he couldn't be here today because he, he was working earlier today. Um, do you all you all go on trips together, yeah. right? And you stay in a hotel or whatever or wherever you go. Um, who snores the most? Or does anyone? Ben. <laughs> just, I feel sorry for you today. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to feel that way about this. If you'd have asked the old team, it would have been different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You got shoved in the car with loads of luggage. Yeah. And, now, and you snore. And I snore, yeah. And, and he's got a cold at the moment. Well. <laughs> so, yeah. Not, not great, yeah. Not great. I, I have to bring earplugs to the meets, don't I? I've got, oh, I've got a bag of earplugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have fun, aren't you? Yeah. I'll, I'll be locked away in my nice, quiet, secluded room, and you'll just enjoy. Me. Yeah. <laughs> so, you've got some things to show me, potentially. Yeah. Some, can serve some bit, bit of behind the scenes. Yeah. Let's have a look. How, where does it end? <laughs> As regards to what? <laughs> are you going to end up modelling the chain dock and uh, we, the nearby campsites? The <laughs> All the stuff for train. Yeah. <laughs> the It'd be nice to have sort of a few country roads connecting up to the main entrance. Not so like it's really far back, but you know, just just enough to really get the vision of really driving yeah. into it. And yeah, so, so I guess that gives an, another gameplay element of driving mm. into a resort. That could be, yeah. Of. And it would be nice to get the chained oak, but obviously... <laughs> yeah. I was just being silly, but yeah. We have, we have thought about it, but it's it's obviously a long way out, and obviously there will be no plan date. So, 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 or we could just... But then again, no one's going to know what it's like, so we could kind of fudge it a little bit, yeah. but yeah. it's like... Yeah. It wow. could be there, but we haven't decided. Okay, yeah, so that's the Virtual Towers Online project. It's been really cool having a look at it. Um, where can people find... So, we're on? on Facebook under Virtual Towers Online. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel. We don't post most of our stuff on there. It's, it's mainly the Facebook page. Uh, you can also find us on Discord, where you can talk to us directly. Uh, we do every now and again, we do a sort of... Um, behind the scenes of what we're working on. It's not really worth an update, but you get to see it's like, oh, well that's being worked on, something like that. 
uh, but most of our stuff, Virtual Towers Online on Facebook. Yeah, so that's how I find them. I, a video popped up and it was a smiler and I was like, oh my god. So I, I'm following that page now. <laughs> I'll see all your updates. Um, so yeah, like them on Facebook and have a, have a check out their videos and stuff. They're really cool and the pictures and things. You seem to update quite regularly, do you? What yeah, do you we, when we do work, we try and update, but there sometimes are periods where it's like we just don't get anything done. Yeah. But Or we'll be working on something that's really, really boring. Like programming. Yeah, <laughs> programming is boring. It's yeah. mind-numbing. It's oh. just lines. It's and just just <laughs> okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you liked having insight into a bit of something that not, no one else is doing. I don't know if there's anything like this has been done before with another park, has it? Do you I know? think so. I've never heard of anything like this before. It's a really ambitious project. I can't wait to see where it goes and see more things get built and more <laughs> things get rebuilt again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and see you later. Bye. 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 I'm stuck in here now, aren't I? Yeah, I have to wait until it starts running. <laughs> yeah, you can't get out that way. <laughs> but then it's like even just looking in the seats. I like, love that, it moves. Yeah, so yeah, the I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to be like on a pre like a solid thing where like, you'd have just set it to move mm. in no, a part no. like <laughs> it. <laughs> Make it invert in station. <laughs> straight away, but it's like the level of detail that it's like it's just a food place but well that's so you've got like leather and yeah um, and then go to the food the till tills, area yeah so we've even got like cash uh, card uh, machines, card machines. <laughs> honestly <laughs> this is just great stop oh yeah it says right so box. alt p Too far. <laughs> run because I'm excited. <laughs> so TV screens. Ah. Uh, and the windows. Yeah, I, we actually took those images inside. Yeah. Uh, inside here uh, for the stained glass windows. Yeah. So it's fantastic. Yeah, all the lighting in here is again is work in progress, but. It's looking better than it's ever looked before, isn't it? At the moment, yeah. it just looks like obviously like <laughs> real, <laughs> like the atmosphere's there. Oh, we've got a collision problem. Oh, no. it must have been one of my last objects. <laughs> hey, well, that's as far as you, <laughs> that's as far as you're allowed to get. <laughs> I spent all that time, eight hours rebuilding this, and you broke it. <laughs> well, or, already, the performance in here is a million times better than it used to be. Yeah, we're running this on what they call cinematic, which is something you're only, so setting you're only supposed to run when you're recording videos. Okay. But it's optimised to a point now where we can we can run it even at that level and still get decent frame rates. Yeah. Let alone when we run it, what would be normal uh, levels of detail, you'd be able to get really good frame rates on most machines, hopefully. So.